welcome back to Foster the Meeple. My name is Jamie. And I'm Jeff. And we're here to do a how to play on Bam, ba, da, da, Overboss from Brother Wise Games. So good. So good. We've only played it a couple times, but we love it. If you watched our top 10 or top 11 video and heard me say that Jeff put a game on his list without playing it, it was this one. It was Overboss. So right now we're going to go through how to play and then we're going to do another video of an actual playthrough. We'll post them at the same time so we'll have them linked somewhere in the cards and down below as well so that you can jump over to the playthrough after you watch the how to play. Or if you're like, I don't care about how to play, you could just go watch the playthrough. Or, or if you just want to see me win a game. God, I hope you don't win again. I'll be so mad. If you're not interested in the game, which I wouldn't understand if you weren't, but if you're not, come on over, watch me win, see the celebration, yeah, yeah. join in in the celebration. That's why the people are here. That's why I'm here. Let's talk a little bit about the game first. So Overboss, a boss monster adventure. It's in the same, I almost said industry, but the same realm as the boss monster game, which came out in 2013. Also, it's a card game. So we good. also, we love boss monster. Jeff has let me know that the old boss monster game is an 8-bit. Yeah, she was saying something like pixels. Pixelated. pixelated. Well, it is pixelated. It is, yeah. But I mean, 8, like 8-bit. Eight kind of Jeff's yeah, in the video work. games big time so. yeah oh my god so like if I can briefly mention why I was originally so excited about this game so it's the same art style as like old RPGs mm -hmm. like Super Nintendo RPGs so like link to the past I'm going super nerd here Chrono Trigger all of those types so the art matches that and I was like instantly like so this is this is so freaking sweet. So in Overboss, you're trying to, what's it called? You're trying to build out your dungeon. Your lord land. What am I trying to say? What lord land? <laughs> no, what's you're that trying mean? To be overlord of you, the board. You're building this land with different types of terrain so that your land is the most difficult for a hypothetical hero to defeat. Sure. Is that correct? I don't know. Overworld? Is that the Overworld is what I was saying. Overworld! Overworld. You're building your overworld. So if you guys are interested in seeing all of the pieces that come in the box, I did make an undress this box video for this game, which I'll also link down below. Today we're just going to talk about how to play. We're going to start with setup. Each player gets a player board, which has two sides. There is this side, which is a three by four, and then there is a four by four side. So this is for a longer game, and this is for the classic game. And this is your layer. layer. The other side doesn't have a layer, you um, just make, you it, just up make it up too. on the side. So each player gets their player board and then you have to choose five terrains from the terrain card. There are ten to choose from, so you randomly mm. just draw five, like so, and we'll use these five as our example. I pulled out the swamp, cloud island, camp, graveyard, and the castle. Once you pull out your five types of terrain, then you need to pull out all of the matching terrain tiles. Side note, dungeons are always a terrain type that yes. you use, regardless of game. So the other five you're pulling are on top of the dungeon tiles, which will be in every game. Exactly. So six total tiles. So you pull out your terrain tiles, which look like this. Then the next thing that you have to do is you have to mix them all together because you're going to be drafting and blindly drafting and pulling out these tiles. So you got to mix up all the tiles, shuffle them together, and then put them in, we put them in two stacks, one on yeah, either side of our draw box. stacks. Then you have to pull out the matching little monsters that come with each terrain. So each terrain has a matching monster and they also have a matching crystal. So those all get pulled out and they get put into the Overboss baggie. Oh, you is that your... That's my cue. Is that your language for hold the bag? Hold my bag. So I'm pulling all these. She's really fumbling through these. They're real little. Dun, dun. It's like a flag. Here, open it up. You're not doing... It's it. open! You're not doing your job. You had one job. I would argue you're not doing your job very efficiently. So you put all of the matching monster tiles for each of the trains into the bag. 
And then you also have to put in the bag the boss monster tiles as well as the Those portal tiles. Those are boss monster tiles. These are boss monsters, No, they're yes. called mini bosses. Mini boss tiles and portals also all go in the bag. I love being right. Mm. It's one of my favorite things other than beating you in games. So now your bag is you gotta built. Mix them up. You gotta shake it all up there. So they're all shaken up. Boop. You've got your tiles. Now you need to actually just set up for game play. Okay? Go. So you lay out your two player mats and then you shuffle all of the train tiles together, put them in two separate piles, put all of your boss monsters or your over, what are they called again? <laughs> mini bosses and monsters into the bag with your portals and your crystals uh. and shuffle those all together. You're going to lay out four terrain tiles in between the two boards and then you're going to pull out and draft four of these little tiny tiles and match them with the terrain. Every time you play you're going to be flipping out a new terrain tile and a new little tiny tile and those are a set that you have to kind of take together. You said match them with a tile, but you should Just clarify. Place them yeah, with it's tile. not, you don't place them with the tile that it's meant to be with. Yeah, it's just they're it's randomized. It's just randomized. When you take a tile in a monster, um, you replace it for the next player. You immediately replace yeah. it. So you flip a new tile and you pull out a new little monster tile and you immediately place those. So on every the board. time a player is drafting, they should have access to four right. tiles and four little mini dudes. Exactly. Then there are two other things that you can actually do in your setup phase. If you want to play the basic game, what we just went over, you'd be done. You can now begin. Or you can play an advanced version. And there's a couple different ways to play the advanced version. And the first way is with these overboss cards. On these cards, you have boss monsters. These are the boss monsters. <laughs> yes, I, I do believe that's correct. Yes. So or are they over bosses? You shuffle up this pile and each player takes two cards at random. Look at those. And then they select which one <laughs> they want. And they keep that secret. When you choose your boss monster, each boss monster is going to remain hidden to you until you choose to reveal it in the game. But each boss monster will have two little written thingies here. One of them is a reveal action. So as an example, King Croak. When you reveal your card, he can draft twice this turn, and then he has to skip the next turn. And then it gives you a special scoring ability at the end of the game. So when you reveal your boss monster, you tell the group, hey, this is my scoring thing, so now everybody kind of knows what you're trying to do, what your yeah. end goal is. So that's kind of the benefit of not revealing it, is that nobody knows what your win Mm -hmm. extra scoring but is. you also if you don't reveal you don't get the reveal bonus you don't get the reveal bonus could go a whole game like jamie mentioned without revealing your boss yes which i did when i won <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh how many when did you win Wait, the first one the first we played, one we played. That, that, those ones never count People are still learning. Asterisk wins. Then the other cards you have are the command cards. We have not played with these and we will not be playing with these in yeah. our playthrough either. But essentially you put these cards out. I think you put like a row of three and you have to create the setup that shows here. So for example, this one is three in a row. So let's just say we had three swamps in a row. Then you could choose to play this card which allows you to move one of your terrain tiles on either your board or your opponent's board. So it's just a way to manipulate the game even mm. more. An added element, yeah, an added a element, strategy. Which is a cool part of this game is that there are so many different ways that you can change up the game. Like mm -hmm. you could do short game, long game, basic game, there's all the different tiles, yeah. command cards, over bosses, like there's mm -hmm. boss monsters. For your turn, you basically have two things that you do. You draft the terrain tile along with the mini tile, the set that comes together, and then you place it on your board. And that's all that you do. Then it goes mm -hmm. to the next player and then they do the same. Now where you place your certain terrain tiles kind of depends on what their abilities are, which we'll go over in a minute. Same with the little tiny tiles. So when you take a tile, let's say we have a swamp and let's just say you pull out the swamp tile and the cloud tile. If these are matched, you're going to take these and you're going to put them together on your board. So the little cloud monster is going to go on top of the swamp tile. Unless there is another tile available within your overworld. That's open. 
that's open. So we'll go over that in a minute as well. But essentially, that's how turns work, and it just goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until the entire board is full. And then the game is over, and then you go into scoring. Mm -hmm. So it's very, really simple gameplay. Very fast, very simple. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. This is where the strategy comes in. Each one of the different terrain tiles scores differently. So maybe we'll just go over the five that we pulled out, just to kind of give you an idea of how the different scoring works. So sure. we pulled out the cloud tiles. With the cloud tiles, they're worth seven points each if they are the only type of terrain in your overworld. Which so, would be impressive if which you would could be, do that. Yeah, that would be really, really hard to do. With the cloud tiles, they're worth seven minus one for every other type of terrain in your overworld. Mm -hmm. So let's just say you have clouds, graveyards, and swamps. Then it's seven minus two for each of the cloud tiles. So five points for each cloud tile. It would be five points for each cloud tile that you had. So the graveyard thing. tiles each have a value on them. Some have one, some have two, and some have three. Base value. Base value. Now, if you are the player that has the most graveyards, then you're gonna score five points. If you have the least graveyards, you're gonna score two points for each of these tiles. All right, next up we have swamps. Ah. Get out of my swamp. Okay. Each swamp tile is worth one. It's then worth plus one if it's next to another swamp tile. Then it's worth another plus one if it's next to water. So the strategy for the swamp tiles would obviously be that you want to build it next to water and you want to build it next to another Adjacent swamp. Adjacent to other swamps. Exactly. Then we have the castle. Straightforward. Castle's pretty straightforward. It's worth two points and it's worth an extra two points if you have a Dracula tile on it and we'll talk about that in a minute but essentially the Dracula tile is the matching castle tile. So mm -hmm. if you have a matching set it's worth an extra two points. Yeah. Then we have the camp tile, and the camp tile is a little bit different. Each camp tile has a different flag on it, so a different colored flag. So if you have one camp, let's say we have the orange camp, and that's all you have, this is worth one. If you have two camps, and they've got the different flags, then they're gonna be worth four points. If you have three camps with a different flag, then they're gonna be worth nine points. And if you have four yeah. camps with a different flag, it's worth 16 points. Yeah, so each flag is unique. So if you had two camps with the black flag, they would all still only be worth one each yeah. because they're not unique. Then finally, we have the dungeon terrain, which is in every game no matter what. And with the dungeon, they're always worth one point, And then they're worth one extra point for each different type of terrain that's adjacent, adjacent to it. So not diagonally, but Adjacent. Yep. Adjacent. The maximum the dungeon can be worth, I believe, is five. five. Yes. And then the unique thing about the dungeon is that you don't put any monsters mm -hmm. or mini bosses in the dungeon. So this always stays open. Mm -hmm. So when you take the dungeon tile and the little character tile, that character tile does not go on the dungeon. It mm -hmm. goes to your lair. That allows or you to or to another open tile. Uh, tile. So grabbing dungeons is actually strategic because then you can start moving it opens up space for you to be able to kind of manipulate your little mm -hmm. your little bosses and stuff. So now I'll talk a little bit about the tiles. Like we said before, each terrain has a matching monster tile. If you are able to match the tile with its matching monster, that's gonna gain you an extra point at the end of the game. You can put any kind of monster or mini boss on any kind of tile with the exception of the dungeon. Doesn't matter, they don't have to match, but if you do match them, you get one extra point at the end of the game. Right. Then we also have portals. So you might pull out a tile that has a portal. The portal does not go on that tile. The portal is gonna go into your layer. And what a portal allows you to do is you can use it at any time on your turn. You just flip it over and then you can move two monster tiles from two of your terrain tiles so you can switch them around. Mm -hmm. So if you want, let's say you have a cloud and a graveyard, you've got a graveyard monster under cloud, cloud monster under graveyard, you might want to switch them so you get that extra point at the end. Portals are key. Key. So the next kind of tile that we have is the crystal tile and each terrain has a matching crystal tile. You can collect these. Once again, it's not going to go on the terrain. It's going to go into your layer and you just save this for the end of the game for scoring purposes. So this one as an example is you'll get one point for every 
camp tile that's in your overworld. Then, last but not least, where are you, little monster? Last but not least, we have the mini bosses, and the mini boss tokens can go on any tile, with the exception of the dungeon tile, and they score two points at the end of the game. So they don't have a matching terrain, they can go on any open tile. And are just worth the base two. Base two. That's how you play the game. The last part of this is how you actually score the games. Did you want to show that one? Well, there's one with me winning and one with you winning. So. She ignored the uh, scoring pad with my victory. Now we go into scoring. You get a scoring pad, and on the scoring pad, it completely walks you through how to score everything. So easy. It's so easy to score. So essentially, the first thing you're scoring is your terrain type. So you mark down the five terrains that you have, and you mark down all the points you have for each terrain. Then you have your dungeons, so you're gonna mark down your points for your dungeons. Then your mini bosses, so like we said, they're just worth two points each, so you put your score there for mini bosses. Crystals, we've already gone over that as well, for any of the matching terrains. So then you have your matching monsters, so that's for any of the matching monsters that you have on the matching terrain. And then you have bands, so we haven't gone over bands yet. Z band. Z band. Essentially with a band is, let's just say, you have four tiles across. A band is all of the matching little monster tiles that you have. They do not need to be on their matching terrain, mm -hmm. but the tiles need to be matching to the little monsters. So let's say you have four Draculas, which are the castle type, all in a row, that's a band. So anywhere from two to four is considered a band. And we should mention not diagonally, horizontal. No, horizontal vertical. or vertical. So how a band is scored is if you have two in a row, it's worth two points. If you have three in a row, it's worth five points. And if you have four in a row, it's worth seven points. Now let's just say you have a band of, we'll keep with the Draculas, but you have three Draculas this way, and then two Draculas this way. You get to score for the three across, which is five points, and then again for the two down, which is two points, so that'd be a total of seven. Look at my math. Eh? So just because you use one little dude to do the um, cross band doesn't negate it from counting for the vertical band as well. Exactly. Then final scoring that you'll have is for your boss. So whatever your boss monster said at the bottom. So as an example with King Croak, he scores plus two for each dungeon on the map at the end of the game. And then you just total it all up and whoever has the most points wins. Usually me. It's history, been even. History has We are even Stevens. Again, the first game is an asterisk game because everyone's learning. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Unless I win, then it's not an asterisk Exactly. Game. <laughs> that is, in a nutshell, how you play Overboss. That's OB. That's OB. OB, Overboss. Overboss. We are going to go ahead and do a playthrough, like I said in another video, so make sure that you jump to that video to watch us Should we play rename and win? the channel Jeff Wins at Games? Nobody would watch that because it's a lie. All right, I'm excited. I love this game. It's so, so good. This game is so good. So we love it. So good. we're really excited to do the playthrough. We'll do the playthrough with the uh, same terrain tiles that we pulled out here, just so that we can kind of have a little bit of consistency between the two videos. And yeah, so jump over to that video, watch us do our playthrough, watch me win, and totally destroy Jack. Can I just add one more thing, though? I think I've alluded mm -hmm. to it. What? Like, if you play games primarily two player, like we do, this is a must this buy. This is a great two like, player game. Must buy. And if for you love you. tile layers, which I am a huge fan of, I'm learning that about myself. And if you're same as me, you grew up with Super Nintendo, and you'll yes. love you'll love the theme and the art. Love the theme. You'll it's love the so art. Good. We love this game. Yeah. So that's all we have for this video. Like I said again, jump over to the playthrough to see us play through the game. And thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe to Foster the Meeple. Follow us on social media at Foster the Meeple, which we finally got. Yes! yes. License plate guy disappeared. It. He just went away. He just disappeared. I don't know. He must have saw our video and was like, mm. Oh, I should, yeah. I should probably I kind of feel bad, but license plate guy, if you're out there in the thank universe, you. thank you. Good karma coming your Big way. Big kisses. Big kisses. Big little kisses. hugs. Little hugs. And we hope to see you again soon. Bye. Later it is. We don't know what we're doing. That is not a lot of rules. Be crooky. I always want to be so close to me. I'm so obsessed. Why are you so obsessed with me? Do I? Oh, that's it's like is that hair? <laughs> this right. shirt is so old. I know. I've had this shirt since like we were first together. American Eagle. What are you, a preteen? <laughs> oh, that's right. Should I not wear it? Why? I don't know. People are gonna be like, 
This guy wear American Eagle. What is he? 13? How old is he? Is he a 13? <laughs> Move your arm. So, so and good. And Jafe. <laughs> Jeff. Old Jafe. Jafe. It's not oh. called Overland, but it's called something. You're building. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you're building your overworld. My god, I cannot talk today. Bubbly plug. Bubbly plug. Bubbly Canada. Canada, hit me up. Love you. Bubbly. I'll do another overlay so you know. Overlays. Getting used to that. I know what that means now. I sure do. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Yikes, Jamie. What? The sass. Ugh. Just pulling these suckers out. Did you mention that um, you have to? I was about to. Oh, cool. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Okay, Maraca. Okay, like I said, each person gets a board. You shuffle all of the. What are you laughing at now? <laughs> Nothing. You're just like. Da, 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 da. This is how I talk. Okay. Da, da. What are those guys called? Conductor. Yeah. Ruh row, we okay. don't know. It's fine. So when you start the game, the first player is going to go first and. The first player is going to go first. Obviously. Oh, okay. So we need Redo. to go back. XOXO. <laughs> now I lost where I was. Gossip but, girl. Yeah.